Here we are in Morocco, in the epicenter of the earthquake. We had many problems uh, trying to look for survivors with our K9 team. We've been working for two days and a half already, and we won't give up till at least two more days trying to help. We've been sponsored by Project Hope. Project Hope has been doing such an effort uh, our, through us to try to bring some help to this country. Yeah, it is a dire situation in Morocco. Law enforcement and aid workers have arrived to help after the devastating 6.8 magnitude earthquake. The death toll now stands at nearly 3,000 in certain villages. People say more than half of the population was killed. Villages of clay and mud brick built into mountainsides have been destroyed. Giant boulders are also blocking some of those steep mountain roads, which means people are trapped. They're waiting for food, water, and electricity, and that is if their homes survived at all. Here now is Chris Skopek, Executive Vice President of Global Health for Project HOPE. It's a global health and humanitarian aid organization working in partnership with a Spanish medical emergency group to provide search and rescue operations near the earthquake's epicenter. And you heard that rescuer there. I credit you all for putting them on the ground there and helping in the search. Thank you for giving us some of your time. What is the greatest challenge right now for the rescuers who are trying to find those who may still be alive? Mostly logistical challenges at this point. The roads have been badly damaged. This is a mountainous area. Uh, there's very little heavy equipment to be utilized. Uh, and on top of that, just the nature of the construction of these adobe uh, uh, structures, homes, buildings, is such that the, the opportunity for pockets of air for survivors is really quite limited. Um, so our team has been doing search and rescue for the last three days with rescue dogs. Uh, excavation by hand in the absence of uh, heavy equipment, and so far no survivors. Wow, I mean, it's incredibly tragic to look at some of the rubble and to think that if people are alive, it's hard to get to them. What is your first priority when your teams show up in a situation like this and logistically uh, just trying to understand what you're dealing with? The first priority, of course, is search and rescue. Try to save people who, uh, who are under rubble uh, in need of survival. That window unfortunately closes very quickly and the secondary focus then is on people suffering from traumatic wounds and injuries. Uh, we're seeing many of those today. We have medical teams on the ground. We've been providing stabilization care and then uh, evacuation to higher level facilities in Marrakesh. Uh, and beyond that, people are without shelter. We have to focus on clean drinking water, access to food, make sure they have the basic uh, needs in place. So. Uh, really a lot of top high line priorities in terms of just making sure people have the basic access to care uh, needed to survive this acute phase of the response. And then further complicating things, Chris, has to be the threat of aftershocks. There have been many already and that risk remains. Our teams are staying in tents. Uh, they're not trusting any structures. Most of the population in this area is as well, whether their homes uh, were collapsed, damaged, or partially destroyed. Nobody uh, is feeling safe in their homes and rightfully so. There are aftershocks. And that just leads to a lot more people uh, sleeping out uh, under the elements. Uh, it's very hot in the daytime. It's very cold at night. And uh, we just need to get as much assistance to them as quickly as possible. There has been some criticism. I was reading some uh, as early as this morning against the Moroccan government that they haven't been quick. But on the flip side, there's been such solidarity among the Moroccan people helping their fellow citizens. Has that been a hurdle for you all working with the government there? And are you seeing that type of support that's necessary? It hasn't been a hurdle. Uh, however, logistically coordination, it's incredibly complex in these environments. Everybody, is, there's an outpouring of support, but at the same time, that can create its own problems. We have uh, vehicles coming from Marrakesh, personal vehicles of, of Moroccans who want to help out. And there's only a handful of roads that are able to, that are still open and accessible to these uh, remote villages. And then it, you end up finding yourself in, in long uh, lines, you're, you're stuck in traffic, uh, you're sometimes if a vehicle breaks down, it can really, uh, really prevent access to through some of the only avenues still able to access these places. So coordinating with other actors, it's not always just a matter of sending as much support as possible. It's making sure it's efficient, well coordinated and organized and, and getting to the people who need it the most. Finally, it's a world away, but it seems so close when you look at these images. I felt the same way in Turkey. If people want to help, uh, what is the best and safest way for them to do so as they're watching from home? 
Well, we really encourage people, if they are interested in supporting and getting aid to the people who need it the most, when they need it the most, is to make cash donations. Uh, go on to a, a website, to a responsible organization like Project Hope, make a donation, and you can be assured that that assistance is going to get be utilized uh, well, quickly, efficiently, and get to the assistance of people who need it. Please give our best to your teams, Chris Kopeck with Project Hope. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.